Hi guys, welcome back to Android Location using Google Places API. Let's extend more on this application. What about we're going to integrate your fencing into a selected location? You know, you have that right there in the recycler view. Whereby if uh, the device or let's say if the device gets into the circumference of the geofence, it's actually going to trigger a silence on the uh, on the ringer of the application or of the device rather so once the device or once the user leaves the geofence circumference uh, it's actually going to return or reinstate back the ringer of the device so that's what we're going to do we're going to integrate geofence into this application and it's pretty much easy uh, still we are extending more on the code so I'm still, uh, it's still an abstract from the code and uh, we'll be looking at the activity main whereby we included the enable geofences, uh, the location permission and the ringer permissions. Uh, these are all enclosed right there over here where we have to use a switch uh, to make a toggle to either enable or disable geofences. Uh, we have for the location permission as well. Uh, that's this is actually going to be a check mark uh, whereby you can uh, trigger the permission uh, for your device location to be gotten. That's the essence of that. And uh, the ringer permission as well. Uh, you must actually uh, check on this uh, to uh, make uh, the application interact with the ringer service of your device. So after including all these uh, details right there in the XML, uh, we'll be creating two other classes. Firstly, we'll be creating the geofencing class and we're going to create its broadcast receiver uh, to receive uh, calls from the geofence. Uh, in the main activity, we'll be doing slight tweak. Uh, Waba will be uh, integrating the geofence uh, as a private field over here. Firstly, we integrate it as a private field. But let's quickly look at the class called geofencing before we look at its uh, integration in the main activity. Uh, this implements the result callback that, was, that will always be a callback uh, when you're using your fencing and you have to implement the result callback which uh, you need to actually uh, override some me a method called on result. Uh, this method must be overridden uh, when you're using the callback. Uh, now we created some fields and uh, some constants you know, the tag and the geofence radius you know to get the radius and also the timeout uh when uh how, how long will the geofence no stay so that's the essence of the timeout and we have a list which is actually coming from the content provider which is the geofence list it's pending intent and the google api client and also the context and now we have a constructor whereby we be using initializing those fields i mentioned and, and we have a method called register all geofences. This actually register the list of geofences specified in the geofence list with Google Place services. You know, it actually connects to the Google Play services. It gets the list of geofences to be registered and also gets their padding intent. Uh, this is the location services which is being connected to and uh, it's actually get their pending intent to launch the intent service when the geofence is triggered. You know, that's just what that does. And we have the unregister all geofences, just is just like the reverse. It unregisters all the geofences created by the app from Google Play Services, you know, which actually connects the Google Play Services and the pending intent as well. You know, this actually uh, unregisters them. And we have the update uh, geofence list, which update the local array list of geofences using data from the list. Uh, it actually uses the place ID which is defined in the API as the object ID, you know, it's used the place to get the ID whereby it gets its latitude and longitude, you know, uh, to determine the coordinates, to determine the present location of the device. So that is going to map around the geofence circumference around there. So that's just what that does. And we have the request, which uh, creates uh, the object using the array list of geofences, you know, uh, we created an object. Uh, of set initial trigger and also we add the geofences to the list 
and now we need a pendinated called get geofence pendinated uh, which are actually calls the geofence transition intent service uh, what this uh, actually uh, uh, points down to the broadcast receiver uh, this is where the broadcast receiver has been triggered and we get the broadcast and uh, we call the context you know we're passing the intent and the pending intent and uh, a constant called flag update current uh, as parameters whereby we need to return the pending intent as well uh, let's get to look at the broadcast receiver uh, this extends broadcast receiver and uh, it handles the broadcast message sent from the geofence transition when triggered you know uh, this is running on the matrix so you have to make sure you start an async tax anytime that it takes longer than 10 seconds or less you know uh, we have the on receive method uh, whereby you get the geofence event from the intent sent through and uh, you test if there's an error it pops uh, to log to the console uh, but if there's not continue you get a transition type uh, which is the transition and it checks which transition type has triggered this event that's when they try to test if the geofence uh, is equal to the constant geofence transition enter probably the device has entered within the geofence you know it's actually going to set the ringer mode uh, to silence once the uh, device enters the circumference of the geofence uh, whereby if it hasn't uh, or it's exited or it's, it's, it gets away from that geofence is actually going to call the ringer mode to normal so that's what that does and it sends a notification a notification has been triggered uh, let's see the build of the notification what about we're going to use the compact builder to create a notification uh, we set that we create an explicit intent construct a tax stack you add the main activity to the tax stack which is done here and you push the content into the stack and uh, we get a pending intent containing the entire back stack uh, which is the stack builder uh, we're going to get a notification builder as well and uh, we check the transition type to display the relevant uh, icon image you know uh, this is where we check the transition if it's enter uh, it's going to call its appropriate drawable or if it's exit it's actually going to call its appropriate drawable as well and uh, you set the content text of the uh, notification and the content intent which is a pending intent set cancel to true or to cancel and we build up the notification using the notification manager it's just how, how how it flows now we have a set ringer mode which changes the ringer mode on the device to either silent or back to normal you know uh this is actually going to do the tweak uh, based on the sdk version if it's less than 24 or uh or it's actually uh greater than or equals to 24 and if the notification policy access granted that if you've actually granted a permission uh, it's actually going to set the ringer mode appropriately so let's look at how it's been integrated right there in the main activity uh whereby we declare it fields uh the geofence m geofencing afterwards we initialize the switch because we actually integrate uh, a new uh switch into the ui uh whereby we have the switch mode and we actually set preferences to this uh, whereby we set checked if it's checked you we call M is enabled and we set on check change listener to this uh, switch mode as well whereby we override the unchecked changed uh, we pass in the view of the button and the boolean is checked and whereby we set uh, those values to the shared preferences for quick save you know whereby we pull the boolean the state of the check uh, that's what we actually have to the uh, to the shared preferences to and able to hold that for us so we have that checked and if it's checked it's actually going to trigger the geofence and register all geofences us is going to unregister the geofence so that's just what that is and now we instantiate the geofence with passing this class and the client as the two parameters uh, let's look at other aspects that were included uh, we included the update geofence list into the refresh places data which is actually from the content uh, provider you know uh, from the SQLite database we need to update geofence list and uh, we also add uh, some other methods like uh, the on resume the on ringer permission click and the on location click let's look at the on resume which call on the superclass is being overridden 
and we initialize the location permission checkbox you know uh, this is where we ask your permission to access find location or not and uh, it's actually going to be checked if it's true and enabled you know so we initialize the ringer permission permission checkbox as well uh, this is what we did right there in the broadcast receiver you know when we test for the SDK version and we call on the notification policy access granted as well without the on ringer permission this actually calls an intent to the provider action notification policy access settings about we stack the activity intent and we have the on location permission click uh, this is also uh, a permission to access find location uh, based on no, it's actually going to access the location of the device. You know, that's what uh, that permission is. we need to initiate them. We just created a view in the XML, but we need to make it work programmatically in the main activity. So, this is just the inclusion we did into this uh, wonderful application. I actually decided to make it short and I'll be uploading the full source code to your to my GitHub account so that we can uh, you can actually pick it from there. I'll actually commit those changes I made. You can see them in light blue. Uh, these are the changes I and the inclusion. I included the geofencing, the geofence broadcast receiver, and also a tweak in the Android manifest by, by including my API key. You should also include your API key. Don't forget very important before you can access uh, Google Maps. So this is just how the application is going to look, and I'm going to actually test this right there in the emulator. So don't go anywhere. Let's see how it works. Let's see how we're going to create your fence around. Our, our selected location and at the same time the device is going to be much more aware of your location so you're actually going to get a list of different locations based on your geographical location based on since you're going to give a permission for the device to check location to check the device location so that's it don't go anyway uh, here we go with the application uh, now we have the settings where can enable your fences, the location permissions, and the ringer permissions. Uh, because we are using an emulator, uh, the location permissions and ringer permissions have been enabled uh, by default. Uh, if you're using the device, uh, you need to actually check this to get permission 